This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Samsung gas range where a couple of the burners aren't lighting. It's the front right and the back left. So most of them are clicking and what I'm doing is I'm looking, uh, when I set one for clicking, I'm looking at all, all of them to see if they're sparking. I'm noticing that the back left one, there's no spark and the front right one, there's no spark. All the other ones, you can see a spark, you can hear a spark. So that means that the um, switches are working to create the spark, but there may be something wrong with either the igniter or the spark module. <clears throat> and my suspicion is that it might be a problem with the spark module. The Samsung range unfortunately is only three years old it's already having this kind of problem but we have a new spark module and we're going to show you how to replace it so I'm just checking here with the burner making sure it's seated properly and I can see a little bit of a spark now and then on this front right burner the back left one there's no spark at all and again I know that the switches work because when I turn the, any of the switches on any of the burners I get a sparking sound and I get spark at most of the burners so we know it isn't the little switches in the front and that brings it down to either bad spark module or uh, maybe a loose wire or a bad igniter so we're going to check out that spark module. What I'm going to do is kind of lift up a little bit in the front of the stove and pull back so I can break the friction of these front feet. And I just want to get this range out. This is what's called a slide in, so it actually slides. You can even spray a little Windex underneath the feet and that will make it slide easier. I only need to move it back maybe about a foot and a half. I'm going to reach down here and unplug it. If you can't unplug it, sometimes you can just turn off the breaker. And I'm going to remove this back panel. I just need to remove it slightly to get to the spark module. So I'll take out some Phillips head screws here on the back left hand side. There's just three. And then I'll take out three of them on the right hand side. And then I'll just lean this back panel away from the stove. It does have uh, three clips at the top also that are holding it in. <clears throat> and I'm going to use my standard head screwdriver to pry <coughs> back on those clips slightly. They're just they're just bendable metal, and they'll they'll be able to allow me to get the panel out of the way enough to get to the spark module. I think these parts sometimes with LG and Samsung are kind of cheaply made, and <clears throat> they don't last as long. They're inexpensive to buy, but they just don't have good longevity. So I'm going to be replacing the spark module and then I'll run a test to see if the burners are going to be okay. We typically see these kind of problems more at about the 10 year mark and again this has only been three years so it doesn't bode well for Samsung's reliability. They're good machines otherwise in terms of being inexpensive and they have lots of good bells and whistles but just don't last well. So I'm using the standard head screwdriver to just to pry back on those tabs. There we go. Now we got the panel back. We have access to the spark module. This is a link to where you can buy the spark module. It has the part number and that's about what they cost. Somewhere around thirty to fifty dollars. So not too expensive. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling the old wires off of the old spark module and then I'm putting them into the new spark module. The ones I'm working with now are bringing power to the module. And when you turn on <clears throat> any of the burner switches, it sends power through the module and then sends power out to all of the igniters. If you get the <clears throat> igniter wires mixed up, it's okay because they all fire at the same time. <clears throat> This is just an old habit I have when I put on new electronic parts is I tend to want to take out the wires uh, one by one and install them onto the new piece one by one. But it's not that critical here because if you mix up these orange wires, the ones that are bringing power to the igniters, it won't cause any trouble at all.
So once we do this wire exchange, we're just going to remove two Phillips head screws that are holding in the old module. <clears throat> we'll use those screws to put in the new one. And then we can test it and see if there's an improvement. So I didn't have any spark at all in the back left and I had a real weak spark in the front right. So the back left certainly has something to do with the spark module. The one in the front may be an igniter problem. We'll take a look. So do make sure that when you put these wires in that they're really seated as, str as strongly or as deeply as they can go because you want a really good connection. So I'm taking out the Phillips head screws on the old one and then I can just put the new one in position, put the screws in and we got it. So this will take you maybe 20 minutes at the most, pretty, pretty fast procedure. So these spark modules live at different places on different stoves. Sometimes they're more over near the burners, but often they're on the back. And what they do is they just take the 110 volts and they step it up to a real high voltage, kind of like a Tesla coil, so that you get a good spark. All right, so we get that into position. And we're going to give it a little test. We're going to plug it back in and see if there's any change. All right, got it plugged back in. Put the burner head back on. Do want to make sure the burner heads uh, fit nice and snug and they're down as low as they can go and they're not at a bad angle. So that front one's still having trouble. Spark module didn't seem to help that one. We'll test out the other ones too. So usually when you have like no spark at all, that's when you were thinking spark module. The front one did have a spark, it was just kind of anemic. And that can be a problem with a dirty igniter or an igniter maybe that has a crack in it where the porcelain's cracked and the electricity is leaving too early so it can't create a very good spark. So now the back one works, so the back left one works. So the uh, spark module cured that problem, but the front right one's still giving us some trouble, so we're going to do a little bit more work on that one. Yeah, all the other ones are doing really good. So I'm going to take my pliers and loosen up this nut that is holding on the igniter on the front right. Usually you can't do this. Usually most stoves don't have a way to really easily get to the igniter. This one is very easy. Just unloosen this nut and the igniter comes right out. When I took it out, I noticed that it was pretty dirty, had a lot of uh, baked oil and food debris in there. So I used my wire brush to clean up the porcelain part of the igniter and then to clean the metal tip so it get really shiny and then to clean also the base where it was uh, plugged into. And then when I reinstalled it, I did put the nut on, but not as tight as before, which allowed the igniter to sit up a little bit higher, so it was closer to the burner head, and then the spark doesn't have to jump as far, so if you have a little bit weaker spark, it may still work. So the main thing that allowed this to work was just cleaning it really well, so there's nothing that makes the um, electricity ground out early and then getting the igniter up a little higher, closer to the burner head. So putting the burner assembly back on. Burner cap on. I'll give it a test. Yep, there we go. So it's just really a, just 
mainly a dirty igniter and maybe adjusting it so allowing it to come up a little bit higher did the trick. So I hope this has been helpful to you too and you get your stove going. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.